In this video, we're going to learn about how matter changes state, and we'll focus on how matter changes from a liquid to a gas, and see how vapor pressure relates to this process. In order to really understand gases, we have to understand how a substance changes from a liquid to a gas. So in this video, we're going to learn three things. Uh, first, we're going to learn how substances change from a liquid to a gas, and understand the difference between evaporation and boiling. Then we'll learn what vapor pressure is, and finally we'll learn how vapor pressure is related to boiling. So first, why are sub substances solid or liquid at room temperature and other substances are gas? Well, this depends on the forces of attraction between particles of that substance. Some substances have very strong forces of attraction and others have weak forces of attraction. So gaseous substances will have very weak forces of attraction while liquids and solids will have stronger forces of attraction. Uh, forces that hold molecules together are called intermolecular forces. And so in order for substances to change from a liquid to a gas, the particles have to break away from each other and overcome those forces of attraction. Now, overcoming these forces of attraction is going to depend on two variables, temperature and pressure. Temperature is the amount of kinetic energy the particles have. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion, so the more kinetic energy, the faster the particles are moving. In terms of temperature, that would be the hotter the particles, the faster the particles would be moving. So if we can get the particles moving fast enough, they can break away from each other and overcome those forces of attraction. When we think of pressure, we're, we're talking about the amount of force pushing down on a substance, keeping it a liquid. The external atmospheric pressure, that is the force of all the air in the atmosphere, uh, is measured in different units. We normally use kilopascals, which is the standard unit of pressure. And the pressure at sea level is about 100 kilopascals. And so if there is a less force pushing the particles together, in other words, less pressure, it's going to be easier for the particles to overcome those attractive forces and separate from each other. Now, liquids are going to spontaneously change from a liquid to a gas through a process called evaporation. Evaporation occurs at the surface of a liquid. Evaporation is the process uh, when particles that get enough kinetic energy can escape the other particles and turn into a gas. Uh, and so this only occurs at the surface, whereas boiling uh, will occur anywhere within the substance. And so boiling will occur at a certain temperature where we've increased the kinetic energy of all the particles that they can all change from a liquid to a gas anywhere within that substance. So this brings us to vapor pressure. Now let's just imagine a liquid inside a container. We've zoomed in uh, to the molecular level. So here's those molecules. And so we can see those molecules. They're going to be moving around with some kinetic energy, but they're attracted to each other. Eventually a particle will get enough kinetic energy to fly away and become a gas. That is evaporation as that particle leaves the rest of the liquid. Now liquids are always evaporating to some extent and even if we steal this container, so if we put a top on it, uh, the liquid is still going to continue to evaporate. Uh, it's eventually, however, going to reach some sort of equilibrium where we've actually had the maximum amount of gas particles uh, becoming a gas and so there's really going to be no more space up here. Uh, for any more gas particles. And so a substance just evaporating is not going to continue to evaporate until this top explodes off uh, the container. We'd have to add more kinetic energy by boiling it in order for that to happen. Now let's back up a little bit to right before we put that top on the container. And inside of this container right now, since it's open to the atmosphere. It's going to have the same pressure as the rest of the atmosphere. So we could say it's at a pressure of 100 kilopascals because that's the standard pressure. Now once I seal it, I'll put the top on, we'll see that it's going to continue to evaporate. We get some more particles uh, inside of that container. And so if there's more stuff evaporating, that's going to add to the air above the liquid. And so the pressure should increase a little bit. So maybe it can go up from 100 kilopascals, maybe up to 103 kilopascals. And so we have a little bit of extra pressure, that extra 3 kilopascals we call vapor pressure. And so vapor pressure is that added pressure uh, created by the vapor of a liquid inside a sealed container. So how does this relate to boiling? Well, the scientific definition of boiling 
says that boiling is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is just equal to the external pressure. So let's go back to our closed container so we can see how this works. If we were to heat up this container and so more of these particles can start turning into a gas, the vapor pressure would increase as more particles are taking up the space up here. And so the vapor pressure would probably get to the point where it'd be able to push the top right off of this container. And so the way I like to think of the correlation between vapor pressure and external pressure is that vapor pressure is a force pushing up, whereas external pressure is the force that's pushing down, kind of holding things uh, as a gas. So if we could increase the force going upwards uh, and get it to just equal and even be greater than that force pushing downwards, we will achieve boiling. And this is how both temperature and pressure relate to the changing from a liquid to a gas. Uh, if we were to just adjust temperature and increase the temperature of the particles, we would increase the vapor pressure until it matched the external pressure. The other thing we could do is we could modify the external pressure. If we could decrease this external pressure, we wouldn't need as much vapor pressure. And so these kind of work together. If one gets smaller, then the other is going to need to be smaller as well. So just as an example of what this looks like, if you were in Denver, Colorado, the altitude there is about 1,600 meters. And so because you're higher up in the atmosphere, there is not going to be as much external pressure. Uh, there's actually only about 80 kilopascals rather than 100 kilopascals in Denver. Since there's less pressure, that's external pressure pushing downwards on a liquid, you don't need to have as much force pushing upwards. And so water actually is going to boil at about 95 degrees Celsius rather than 100 degrees Celsius because of that lower external pressure. And so that is how substances change their state and how vapor pressure relates.